Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to calculate pH at any point in a titration. In my previous video we looked at how to calculate the initial and equivalence point pHs and those are quite straightforward. In this case we're going to look largely at um, the pH in the buffer region of the titration and the pH beyond the equivalence point. So without further ado let's think about the pH at any point in the titration. So what we have to do is think very carefully and clearly in our head. What did we start with? How many moles of acid or base did we start with? How many moles of acid or base have we added? Therefore, how many moles of our conjugate acid or base have been formed? Because the acid is converted into the conjugate base, or the base is converted into the conjugate acid. So we need to think about how many moles of that are present. We need to think about what is the final, if we know how much we started with and how much has been added, then we should be able to work out what the new concentrations are. Remembering that because we've added extra solution, then there is also some dilution going on, because it's a new total volume. So um, it's really important to, to visualize this really clearly and picture in your head exactly what's going on. Once you know what's going on, you can use your Ka or Kb expression to work out the pH. Just by putting that in. And you can treat it, if it's in that buffer region particularly, you can treat it like a buffer calculation because that's effectively what it is. You've got a mixture of an acid and its conjugate base at some concentrations, so you can treat that in that way. So here's an example, again from an NCEA exam paper. We have 20 mils of ethanoic acid, and it's titrated against 0.1 mole per litre sodium hydroxide. And the question is asking you to determine the pH once you've added 5 mils of sodium hydroxide. So very clearly, We've added 5 mils of sodium hydroxide. The total volume of our solution is now 25 mils. Please keep that in mind. Okay, so the first thing we're going to think about. Initially, we've got 20 moles of ethanoic acid. 20 mils of ethanoic acid, I should say. We can calculate how many moles of that there is. Okay, so that's our initial moles of ethanoic acid. We have added... 5 millilitres of sodium hydroxide, and so we can calculate how many moles of sodium hydroxide we've added. Now, as we do that, as we add the sodium hydroxide to the ethanoic acid, some of the ethanoic acid is going to react with the sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide is all going to react because that's going to get used up. As we're adding it, it's reacting. So as we're adding it, it's taking away some of the ethanoic acid and replacing it with sodium ethanoate. So we can work out, we've got our equation there. So if we assume that all of the added sodium hydroxide has reacted with the ethanoic acid to form sodium ethanoate, we can assume that the moles of sodium ethanoate, oh, sorry, the moles of ethanoic acid that we have after five mils of sodium hydroxide has been added is that, and therefore the concentration is there using that volume of 25 mils. The moles of sodium ethanoate is going to be the same as the moles of sodium hydroxide that you added because all of the sodium hydroxide is going to turn into sodium ethanoate. And so therefore we can work out the concentration of that as well. Now, all we've done at this point is calculate the new concentrations of sodium, uh, sodium ethanoate and ethanoic acid. What we can do now is actually come to that pH calculation. So we've been given a pKa, turn it into a Ka, or 
if you prefer to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, the buffer equation, you can do that. But I'm going to go back to first principles because to me that's the easy way to do it. So we've got our equation, we've got our Ka expression. Ethanoic acid times hydronium divided by ethanoate ions times hydronium divided by ethanoic acid. We know Ka, we know ethanoate, we know ethanoic acid, we want to find hydronium so that we can then work out the pH. So we're going to rearrange it, substitute our numbers in, put everything into a calculator carefully and solve it. From our hydronium ion concentration we can then calculate pH which is 4.35. Now this makes sense if you think about it because we've got 20 mils of ethanoic acid which would have a low-ish pH. We've added a little bit of sodium hydroxide, so it's going to make the pH go up a little bit, but it's nowhere near enough to neutralize what we start with. Okay, that is the pH at the, at, you know, partway through the buffer system. Now, just a really quick note, if we are exactly halfway to the equivalence point, then the concentrations of ethanoic acid and the ethanoate ion, or the concentration of the acid and the conjugate base, would be exactly equal because we would turn exactly half of our acid into the conjugate base. If you look at this equation, you can see that if the concentration of ethanoic acid and the concentration of sodium ethanoate were equal, then the hydronium would equal the Ka. pH equals pKa at half equivalence. So that's just a little thing to be aware of. You don't have to remember that. You can work it out from scratch every time. Okay, here's the final calculation that I really want to throw in here. And this is the pH beyond the equivalence point. And this is, it's kind of nasty in its thinking, but the actual calculation is really easy once you've thought through it. Okay, so this is back to our hydrofluoric acid example. Which I used in the last video. This is another part of that same question. We've got the titration curve and the question this time is what is the pH once we've added 24 mils of sodium hydroxide? Now if you look at this graph you can see that there isn't anything here at 24 mils but you can have a look at the trend and you're going to say well the pH has got to be greater than 12. Now I like to do that at the start just so that I've got in my head roughly what the answer should be. Because then if I do a calculation and I come up with an answer of 23 or an answer of 1.1 then I know I've stuffed it up. Which is quite useful I think because then it gives me a chance to go back and fix it. So let's think about what's happening here. We've got 20 mils of hydrofluoric acid and we've added 24 mils of sodium hydroxide of the same concentration. The total volume is 44 mils. All of the hydrofluoric acid has been neutralized, has reacted away, and what we have left is a bit of sodium hydroxide, basically a dilute sodium hydroxide solution. So, okay, we've got this dilute solution of sodium hydroxide with some sodium fluoride, actually it's not an insignificant amount of sodium fluoride, but the pH contribution from the sodium fluoride is insignificant, because although sodium fluoride is a weak base, it is such a weak base that its influence added to the sodium hydroxide is going to be negligible. So we're going to ignore the sodium fluoride. So if we started off with that many moles of hydrofluoric acid, and we've added that many moles of sodium hydroxide, we can assume that all of the hydrofluoric acid will react with some of the sodium hydroxide. So there will be some sodium hydroxide left. So the remaining sodium hydroxide, we've got that number of moles, we have a total volume, and therefore a concentration, 
So concentration is moles divided volume. Now because sodium hydroxide is a strong base, we know that if the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0235 mole per litre, then the concentration of hydroxide ions is going to be exactly the same, just like in any strong base calculation. So if we know the hydroxide ion concentration, we can work out pOH and pH. Or if you prefer to go from hydroxide to hydronium and then to pH, you can do it that way as well. But you're going to come up with the same answer either way. And you can see that our answer of 12.37 is quite sensible. So I hope you found this useful. This is a really quick run through of how to calculate pH at any point in a titration. Obviously, you will need to do some practice on these. But the general format, the general process that you're going to use is the same. The most important thing, and I cannot stress this enough, is that you need to stop and think about what is present in my beaker, in my titration flask, in my solution. If you stop and you think about that every time and then go from that point, you will be absolutely fine. If you try and apply an out-of-the-box solution where you just kind of pick it up and go, oh, I'm just going to stick the numbers into this equation and, and hope for the best. I'm sorry, but it probably won't be successful. So always just stop and think, what do I have? What do I know? What can I do with it? What am I trying to find? And work your way through that. This is very much a problem-solving approach. So I hope you find this useful. And I hope to see you again soon. We've got one more video in this series, which is going to be looking at uh, the use of acid-base indicators. So I'll see you there. Bye.